Yeah. And Rena is already here to tell us what's trending. Good, Good morning. morning. Morning, Rena. Show BB. That's the one I heard today. So tell us what's trending. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that coming from? I'll tell you after. <laughs> oh my God. So, what's trending? Well, quite a number of things. The last one you mentioned, Gawon was um, at the State House yesterday to see Mr. President for the first time since his emergence. And he's saying that we have to be patient, of course. But Nigerians are not finding that be patient funny. Oh, uh, yeah, so. Okay. You have and a host floor. of others. Mm. Okay, <laughs> let's leave you to it then. All right. We'll see you after. Absolutely. Hello there. Good morning to you. This is Kakaki Social. I'm Rena Obuzegi. Now, we'll begin with the national chairman of the Labour Party this morning, Julius Abure, who was on Wednesday arrested by the Nigeria Police Force over allegations of firearms possession, attempted murder, and an un of an unnamed person, among other things. Well, the arrest and that of about four others was made on Wednesday in Benin, the Edo State capital. Short clips from the scene suggest Abure suffered manhandling by the police. No, 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 Well, the commission has denied maltreating Abure. They claim that Labour Party supporters were fighting to resist the arrest. The reason he was asked to sit on the floor. This has to do with a petition, a written petition. Zone 5 Benin from the office of the Inspector General of Police in the case of a attempted murder, conspiracy, previous harm and um, so I think some other related offences. So based on that petition, he was arrested and the investigation is ongoing. They were also in possession of a firearm, I think a shotgun and uh, three rounds of uh, live ammunition. There were video clips, recordings of um, the petitioner being assaulted, being beaten when he came to Benin, I think last year, to conduct a world, um, world, world something. I know there are videos of him being beaten. And based on that, he wrote to the, the Inspector General of Police. And the IGP in turn endorsed that petition to Zone 5 because Zone 5 is, 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 is Benin. It's closer to where the offence was committed. And based on that petition, he was, in, he was invited. So when we tried to invite him to the station, people tried to prevent his lawful arrest. And that's what caused that chaos. And they told him to sit on the ground. We will not, we are, we are civilised beings. We, not, we, not, so we don't need to assault somebody that wants to invite, to, to invite to our office. Alrighty, please say they are civilized beings, no debate. Um, Lucky says good for him. There are too many allegations. He should defend himself and come out clean before thinking of being the party chairman. We don't want moles at the party. Peter Obi should better still form his own party and he will still get the needed support. Also in reaction, Eyes on the Judiciary says for someone that has not been convicted of any crime to be ordered to sit on the ground during his arrest, is something disheartening. The Nigeria police force is evil. Also on X, um, this user says, this is the opportunity APC has been looking for. Now, Labour Party will become a subsidiary of APC. Watch out how the drama will unfold. APC has started preparing for 2027. He will be released on negotiation. And then Peter Rabi also commented yesterday about midnight, about past 11 p.m. He wrote quite a number of things, but um, I just decided to take his last paragraph why he says it is imperative to reiterate that no pretext or subterfuge should be employed to stifle Nigeria's political opposition. Therefore, I urge that he should be granted bail based on his status while the investigation, his alleged offense continues. He also said that he didn't like it, that he was made to sit on the floor, and he says that was dehumanizing of someone who has not been convicted of any crime. Let's move on to more stories.
Now, Nigeria's 1966 to 1979 head of state, retired General Yakubu Gowon, was at the presidential villa to see the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, on Wednesday. Speaking to newsmen on his way out, General Gowon said it was to primarily discuss the state of the economic community of West African state ECOWAS. Well, on the biting economic reality across Nigeria, the third head of state's asked Nigerians to afford Tinubu more time before concluding on him. Uh, surviving uh, a, a leader or founding fathers of the, uh, of the ECOWAS, I think we had to discuss uh, some of his, uh, his plan uh, in order to see what can be done to bring the matter uh, you know, under, uh, under control. We've got to Nigerians have to give uh, uh, the, the president uh, the, you know, time to get things really done and it is uh, too early to sort of say uh, yes, that absolute result, perfect result would be achieved in, uh, now. So uh, that is my uh, you know, opinion. All right, he says that is his opinion, which is entitled to bro privilege. Esquire says, by the time Tinubu stains all the elders wide finish, Nigeria may not have an elder statesman or cleric again. But then the public defender says General Yakubu Gowon retired, became the head of state as a bachelor in his 30s, and enjoyed the wealth of Nigeria. Today, educated men in their 40s and 50s are jobless and depend on handouts. He does not understand what it means. And um, for Ethbo, it says, what time does a person who came prepared for the job need again after almost a year? Something he's prepared for all his life, asking a question. But call me, BJ says, he means give him time to recover the money he spent during elections, where you cannot absolutely um, define what someone else is saying. But then um, Daniel Boala's um, quote is now being brought back is December 26, 2023, where he says, even if you give Tinubu 30 years, nothing will work. A post by Daily Post right there. But I think he would not say this anymore. You know, he's shifting grounds gradually, kind of moving to the other side of the room. But let's have our final story that is coming from Edo State. The governor, Godwin Obaseki, says he's afraid that there is no need or there is no end in sight with the current hardship, recalling how he blew the whistle that former President Muhammad Buhari and embattled CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele were printing money unprovoked the last administration. He stressed that there will be no need or that there will be need for urgent measures to save the day. When I remember, after COVID, now I started to shout. Say, Wahala, they come. Say, problem, they come. Say, the way that they do something for Nigeria, it will create problem for us. And I remember, yeah. but everybody, they shout, say, oh, the man don't come, now, so, so trouble is a big make. Anyway, not be that one, I can't talk. The trouble don't come now. So, may we sit down, see how we will come out of our. From what I know, this problem is not going to come out, it's not going to go away soon. We just start. I'm sorry, but neither the truth. I know, I know, I know the light will, I know the light of my people. This problem is not going to come out soon because the way we're supposed to address up will never start. Everybody still they blame each other, they talk to each other, I got one, the minister for information, they open them out, they talk anyhow. Rather than us sit down to see a problem, they make all of us come together, see how we can resolve this problem. Well, he was speaking with stakeholders on controlling prices of goods in Edo State. Um, some thought here, Captain Shook says, I remember when this man said they were printing money then. He was called all manner of names. Now look at the mess we're in. 
And um, for another user, he says he actually spoke about this last year and they abused him. Turns out he was right. We need to be accountable to the people we claim to lead and tell them the truth. And he says, kudos to Obaseki. Uh, but then, you know, there will always be the other side. Let's see what is coming in. All of the most I says, and some people in Edo State don't rate this man because of federal roads. And finally, um, ABM says, how can it go away when he's also part of the problem? All of our leaders are guilty. Akwapio just exposed them again yesterday. Over 30 billion naira each state received from FIRS. Well, Akwapio wasn't even sure. He says it's like they got something like that. See if Akwapio is sure, I mean, who is going to be sure? But then let's leave it at that and call it a day today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'll see you again tomorrow. If you need to reach out to us, our WhatsApp number is 0811 Someone says I should know my number in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I went from my account number. Not to the enter. <laughs> oh, is it trusting that there's one that entered? And that's very important, you know. That aspect. Yes, like ask me to call my account number right now. I will call bank A and bank Z for you, but phone number. It is, it is swear. <laughs> All right, Rena. Okay, so well, it's not. This is not gender based. Let's not make money gender based anything. But I'm coming. It's only your account number you remember, not even your phone number. Tell me you don't like money, sir. Okay. I don't. Okay. Ah. I love you. Okay, <laughs> Rena. <laughs> I, I really wanted us to talk about the comments, you know, uh, made by people after Go General Gowon's uh, statement. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he enjoyed money as a Nigerian, young Nigerians, yet people who are older and uh, have gone to schools cannot get jobs. That's a very important one Absolutely. for me. So I think the, there's a need to get back to where we're coming from, where people can get scholarships to go to school if you have the opportunity and all that. All right, Rena, thank you so much for all you do on the social media space. Thank you too. All have right. You too. Bye. See you around the corner. Yep. <laughs> All right, it's still Kakaki, the African voice with.